hello welcome to ARA solutions channel in this um, video we'll be looking at an example that borders on um, an acceleration varying with velocity on direct linear motion and we're going to walk through this problem of an aircraft which moves with an acceleration that is directly proportional to the square root of its velocity that a is equal to 20 root v it was observed that when t is equal to 0.5 seconds, the displacement is 0.3 kilometers and velocity is 100 meters per second. And we are required to determine the displacement velocity and acceleration when t is 10 seconds. So um, primarily, we have been given a question. We must identify what has been given to us specifically. First and foremost, we are told that the acceleration is proportional to the velocity to the square root of velocity and we're given the relation a is equal to 20 root v we're also given um, specific instructions specific speci we're given specific variables for time of 0 0.5 seconds the first one that is given to us is displacement we're told that is equal to 0 0.3 kilometers and the velocity is 100 meter per second square and now we are told to look for the displacement, the velocity, as well as the acceleration when the time is 10 seconds. And um, to solve this problem, we must first show identifying what has been given to us. We had a relation for acceleration. We had our time for five seconds and other variables which include the displacement at that five seconds and the velocity at that time. Then we are asked to look for displacement, velocity and acceleration when the time is 10 seconds. To solve this problem, we must find a relationship between displacement, velocity, and acceleration as a function of time so that we can impute the value of time equal to 10 seconds into the equations or that relation to find, to evaluate the particular value for displacement, velocity, and acceleration respectively at that particular point in time. So to begin with, we must call, look at all our formulas and we're going to start by first trying to determine an, an equation for, for maybe either distance or velocity. Let's say we are to work with velocity first and we must identify what we have. First, we have a relationship between acceleration and velocity. Then we have another relation between acceleration, velocity, and time. And this may be useful for us because in the question, we're given a value for time and we're given a value for velocity. So we can work with all this that we have to first de derive an equation for velocity as a function of time. And to do that, we must call back what we have. First and foremost, we have a relationship between acceleration and velocity. Then we have a relationship between acceleration, velocity, and time. So we want to try to marry these two equations by putting the value of acceleration, which is 20 root v, into the second equation to get 20 root v is equal to dv dt. And of course, if we have this, if you multiply both sides by dt and you make the v subject or you make the v subject of the formula, we have that dv is equal to 20 root v dt. And if you introduce your integration sign so that we can integrate suitably and get a simple formulation, um, we will be able to arrive at our solution from here. And to do that, we have to first divide both sides by dv so that um, all the v's can be on one side and all the time as many as possible will be on one side and what we have is dv divided by root v is equal to integral of 20 dt and this is same thing as v raised to power minus half multiplying dv is equal to 20 root t if if you integrate this you get a relation like this and this relation is obtained by first the power of v you add one and you divide by the new values that you have while for the other side side once you integrate 20 dt you get 20 t plus constant of integration so um, not to, to so to proceed from there if you simplify you get v raised to power half divided by half is equal to 20 t plus c and that can be simplified as shown now let's not forget that we are given certain variables t and the value of velocity at that time 0 0.5 seconds so if we input these two variables into our equation we can quickly and easily find c1 from there and if that is resolved you get a c1 equal to 10 and if you take the value of c1 back into the equation you get 2 
v raised to the power half is equal to 20t plus 10. And that can be written simply as v raised to the power half is equal to 20t plus 5 by dividing through by 2. Or if you square, square both sides of the equation, you have that v is equal to 10t plus 5 raised to the power 2. And that's our relationship for velocity as a function of time. Next, we want to find a formulation for s as a function of time. And to do that, we need to call back some of the things we have. We had acceleration, we have time, we have displacement, we have velocity at that time, and we have a relation for velocity. So we want to look for our displacement as a function of time. To do that, we're going to walk through our equations one after the other. The first equation, we have that v dv is equal to ads. Of course, we don't have time in this equation. So it may not be useful for us to determine a relation for time, for displacement as a function of time. Then also, if we pick a second equation, we have A is equal to dv dt. Of course, this equation does not have displacement, no distance there. So because x is not there, we cannot use this relation to find the relationship between displacement and time. Then let's go to a third equation. For this equation, we have acceleration, which is equal to... The second derivative of displacement with respect to time. Of course, this equation could be useful because we have velocity and if we differentiate velocity with respect to time, we have a function for acceleration. And we can put that into the equation to solve our problem by integrating twice. And notwithstanding, we also have a value for acceleration given earlier. We can impute the value of velocity that we have into that relation of acceleration to get another equation. And we integrate the final answer, which will be a function of time, to get our displacement. And finally, there's a last relation between velocity and displacement and time. And this, of course, will be useful because we have a relation for velocity and time. And thus, we can use it directly to solve our problem. And this seems to be the easiest procedure. So we are going to solve this by first calling our relation v is equal to ds dt. And we have a relation for velocity v is equal to 10t plus 5 or is to power 2. So if you put this value of v into our first relation, we have a new equation as shown. And if we multiply both sides by dt, of course, we have something we can integrate to get our relation for distance as a function of time. So if we do our integration normally, we have that x is equal to 10t plus 5 or is to the power 3 divided by 3 times 10 plus c2. Where c2 is a new constant of integration. And um, of course, if you simplify for that, you have a new relation. But we may want to find the value for c2. So if we bring our equation that we have and we bring out what has been given to us, we're told that s is equal to 300 meters. That's we're told is equal to 0.3 kilometers which is also equal to 300 meters, and time is equal to 0.5 seconds. So if we put all this into our equation and we simplify, we can easily get C2 to be 266.67. And we can touch rewrite our displacement equation, replacing C2 by its value to get our relation for displacement. And once this is done, well, um, obviously, the question is not to find those relations. The question is to find a value for distance, a value for velocity, and a value for acceleration when time is 10 seconds. We already have a relation for displacement. So if you put in your value of um, 10 seconds into that in the place of t in that equation, you can easily work out our value for displacement to be 39.12 kilometers. Then also, if we bring our relation for velocity and we impute our value for time, that's t to be 10 seconds, and we work it out, we get a value for v to be 11,025 meters per second. And finally, if you bring in your acceleration, acceleration is equal to 20 times root v. We already have a value for v to be 11,025. So if we bring that into the equation, we can easily find our acceleration to be 2100 meters per second square and of course the, we've calculated our value for this for displacement for velocity and for acceleration effectively well just to check if what we did was correct we already have a relation for velocity l as determined earlier we know that acceleration is dv dt so if we differentiate acceleration if we differentiate the velocity to get acceleration we get a new 
value for acceleration which is 2 times 10 times 10 t plus 5 so if we put in our value of t which is 10 into that equation we and we simplify we get acceleration to be equal to 2100 which is equal to the acceleration that we estimated earlier and and that will be all for now i want to believe that the explanation was clear if you have any issue or you need clarification of any kind do well to just write it on the comment section and i will respond as soon as possible thank you